Hello everyone, welcome back to Clementine Creative. My name is Clementine and I'm back with another video. This time, in this video, we're gonna be taking the same concept as we did for the female character where we made her all the more sexy. Uh, I think that episode was definitely hot. <laughs> but no. Uh, so what we're doing is taking the concept, the same premises of uh, sexing up a character or, or how it looked more appealing except for males, it looks like, uh, or it works slightly different than for female characters. So for female characters, uh, what we're trying to do is to create her more sexy by removing pieces of the armor, pieces of clothing, and revealing areas around the, ar the red zones, which would be the crotch, boobs, and butt. Uh, in this case, this is not something that we need to worry about um, because male characters usually, uh, they have more armor the more cool they are. So let me, let me rephrase that so it sounds a little bit better than the way I said it. But basically what this means is having a male character look more awesome is usually done by actually doing the exact opposite as for female characters. While we like to strip down women, for men we like to put more clothing on them because, you know, like I said, the sexiest man will never look as sexy as the sexiest woman. <laughs> That's why we want to put more clothing on the guys. Uh, but no, uh, the reason for that is because we, guys, are like video games in general, are more meant to appeal to men than women because men are bigger nerds than women probably. I don't know, don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not a statistic maker. I'm, I just assume. That's right, I just assumed, but um, basically men have this tendency of having more is awesome, right? We want bigger stuff on ourselves. So if you're, on, let's say if you choose a knight, like you want to be a powerful knight in a video game, usually what you will do is you will try to find the biggest ass armor you can get, the biggest weapon, the, biggest, the bigger it is, the more it is, the, the awesomer you are. And that's just how it is. That's just how we like to do things not now remember this is not the same for everybody you might have your own preference you might like men with less armor that is you know totally different for each individual person now i'm talking to the vast majority and how i've seen being done in video games man for armor was never really revealing it was definitely more concealing uh in fact revealing armors for men is something that is a lot more popular in anime and manga than you see in the world of video games uh, if we take for an example, some of the anime characters have these really short um, short jackets, like their sleeves are normal sized, but their uh, torso covering up area is very short, so it exposes their belly button and everything. Uh, I think that looks kind of cool on dudes as well. Um, and you can see that being used in a, a couple of anime, which, you know, again, this exposes characters to make them look more sexy especially it really again depends on what kind of concept you're dealing here with if you're doing romance or fantasy fighting it really depends uh, but here you can see a pretty casual character oh and just before i forget i'm taking the same elements as in the previous design for the woman to see you know it, it'll i think it'll be easier to see with the same elements what can be done to to either make the character more sexy if it's a girl or make it look more awesome if it's a dude what can you add on top right there are going to be some new elements that i'm going to create for this specific design but uh everything or most of the stuff that i'm using right now is something that you've already seen on the female character whether it's the bamboo shield or wooden shield part uh, wooden armor parts or little dotted knee pads or you know whatever it is but some elements are gonna be new uh, so here we see a very regular dude he's just like has this armor that really wouldn't protect his arms very well or his sides uh, but it still does the trick for you know for basic protection and then we look at this guy the next guy we can already see that we're going big on him where you can see the shoulder guards are much bigger covers up the entire shoulder up to neck and down to where the shoulder forms into an arm uh it definitely lends a lot more protection than the first piece and let me just have a sip of my water because i've been talking for 45 or 45 minutes straight just recording these videos there we go, yeah. A little bit of water drinking in a video never hurt no one, right? You can take a sip of your own water as well, so you won't die from listening to me so long. <laughs> uh, but again, we were talking about the armor, right? You can see I added another piece of armor 
in on the side of his chest or on the side of his torso. Uh, reason for that is to just add more. So the more protection he's got, the cooler he looks. The hairstyle in this case really didn't mean anything. Um, it was more, more design purpose. But you can see that I started actually adding in the armor bits for the helmet. Uh, but the helmet is not yet there. You can only see he has a couple of pads protecting him. Uh, so here I draw again little uh, armor thing and remember a reverse to what we did before where we removed armor now we're trying to add more and more so each time we're going to draw a new character there's going to be a lot more stuff on him but yeah hopefully I don't run out of things to talk about usually I don't I'm quite a talkative person uh, let's see what's going on so actually what I really like about this particular designs they took very fast to make uh, because again you can see that this is not a very special design the armor is very basic and very generic doesn't have anything appealing to it other than the fact that it's Japanese um, everything else is pretty much regular and the slon art very very sketchy you can see it's not very clear there's still some things that it definitely conveys the idea well once you see it from a distance but up close maybe it's not the best thing you've seen um, and, and one of these took me around an hour to make, and I had a really easy going, like this was an easy going hour. I didn't like try to make it really fast. This was an easy going hour, which means these sketches did not take that long to do. Uh, is this a thumbnail? You know, this could be a thumbnail if you want to present, and I'm talking about this could just a thumbnail. This kind of thumbnail could be presented probably to a client. Uh, if it's somebody you don't know. Uh, I think it conveys the idea well enough, uh, but then again, you have to decide on your own. Depends really on what kind of client you're working with. Um, but let's see. So here I'm adding the infamous huge pants. Every single samurai alive has these huge ass pants on. Like I've seen this pants so many times. Uh, and I don't even think they're part of the kimono set. I'm actually not sure. Uh, or in a lot of anime, these huge pants are so popular. Uh, and I draw these huge pants all the time because something about them, you know, something about these huge pants that I like. Uh, but you can see how more monstrous his armor starts to look like on his legs already. He's got this much larger dotted padding on his knees. Let me take another sip. I'm running, uh, I'm running dry and juice here. Not actual juice, I mean like talking juice. <laughs> Uh, sorry for that. That was a weird cut of what to water drinking from explanation to water drinking, but uh, let's continue. You can already see that he has a lot more armor in different places. Not only you can only see on his hip, we have another piece there that protects his side. Uh, his armor starts to get longer, and now we start to see some real development. So now look at this we got two shoulder guards, so there's definitely one underneath. What's it called again? Uh, I don't know what this part is called, but basically uh, between the neck and the shoulder, it's probably actually all shoulder now that I think about it. But on this muscle that connects the shoulder and the neck, we have another armor underneath, uh, double protection there. And we can see that this armor extends almost down to the entire bicep, almost through the entire bicep. Uh, the only reason why it didn't is so that the guy could actually move his arms. So now we see we have a little bit of, bit of a different design on the chest this, chest piece. And I think there's more coming in. And I decided to, this time around, I add an actual armor uh, on his... Um... What are they called? Oh my god, how could I forget? <sighs> uh, what are the, uh, the opposite of... Elbows, right, elbows. There we go, <laughs> opposite of knee knees. I was going to say, what is the opposite of knees? <laughs> elbows. Uh, but yeah, I decided to put an actual armor uh, in the second design. We have like this string uh, again, Muatai string. If you've uh, if you know what Muatai is, it's uh, it's a martial art from Thailand, and they use this string. Uh, I, I, this might even be rude to call it string because I don't know what it really is, but it's technically let's talk technical it's a string that is given on your arms and i think on your legs uh for protection you know against punches and kicks uh when you kick and you punch not when somebody else does that to you uh of course in um in muay thai we also use uh elbows and knees 
which is why it's one of these really deadly sports. Uh, really, not deadly, but it hurts, you know, probably more than boxing if you get hit by a... You know what? I'm not going to say anything because I honestly don't know. I don't want to get hit with an elbow in my face, but... <laughs> Generally, I think it's much more horrible to be hit in the face by an elbow than a fist um, or a knee. I don't know. Um, and also in what I don't have giant padded, you know, uh, boxer gloves. They have uh, either the string, which is the protection uh, by itself, or MMA boxing gloves, which are a little bit thinner than normal boxing gloves. Um, but enough about martial arts. Uh, the reason why I used that was because it kind of falls in the theme of Asia and it kind of fits with the whole design. So I just used it because it fits. Now you can see I'm starting to make the armor wider. Um, it's getting a little bit more orna ornamented and I'm starting to add more wire. And this wire would generally be gold or maybe red. It would be colored. You know, it would be a decorative wire that also serves a purpose, which is holding everything uh, all of the armor in place. We can see the armor also extends on the back. We have another pant, one side of the pant drawn in. And we can see that the helmet is now starting to get formed. Uh, is that actually not starting to get formed? We already have the helmet on. Uh, the only thing he now needs is a face mask, which is gets in the last one. Uh, and if you didn't know, Samurai used to have these masks on. Uh, I'm not sure if this is you know 100% true, but if I if my memory serves me right, they were used to uh, uh, basically make their enemies afraid, you know, because they look like demons, uh, uh, and you know, seeing a normal person and seeing a demon, you know, it kind of it it scares you a little bit, and they use that to their advantage, uh, if I am correct, uh, and also it made for a really badass armor that we now get to make video games out of, so there's that. But now we're going to make a really big armor. Not, not really big armor, but we're going to make him be armored up. And you can see that design-wise, these armors are not that different from each other. So that's why it didn't take a long time to design. Even design-wise, uh, design as far as, I don't know, uniqueness goes, I guess that's what you can call it. Uniqueness, something that would be very unique. It, it's not really there. There's no originality. It's more or less generic. But you can see I'm dropping in now the helmet. Uh, just making it like a demon. Uh, you know, trying to make it look like a demon. Make it a little bit spiky. And there we go. Now he has this armor on. And uh, the, the top is now done. Look at that hair, though. That's... <laughs> Those fabular two-string hair, like two bangs out. Um, but yeah, now I'm trying to add the chest armor. Sorry, I had to take a sip of water there. Um, otherwise, I would have caught like a, like an eagle. If eagles would caught, they would caught like I would. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do these really bad jokes that nobody finds funny. <laughs> uh, but you can see that the armor is now being expanded almost completely around him. Uh, there's only a little bit of an area exposed on the side. You can see now he's getting this wrapper almost all around all of his arm. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, almost around the entire arm. So really well protected arm. Uh, here I try to do something that didn't really turn out that well. Uh, huge armor plate. Like you can see there is uh, uh, his upper body. I think I expanded a bit. The arms became even thicker than before. And that's what we want. We're looking for the whole toughness factor. So for female, you want to strip them down and make them look more vulnerable, uh, which makes them more sexier. For males, usually you don't want to strip them down to show off their six packs or their biceps. Uh, although that is a possibility. Again, it really depends what you're doing. But in this case, if we're talking about the samurai, what we want is more on him. The more you have on, the cooler you think you are. And if we take a very good example from a game called For Honor, uh, I played it for a bit and I had this uh, I was a samurai character and I know that always when I had the bigger the piece looked like the better it was because it looks more protective it looks cooler and that's really what I like uh, about armor when it comes to dudes you know this bulky ass armors it really again depends on what kind of a character you're playing uh, but I am very interested in huge armors here you can even see he gets this dragon um, into his kimono if that is a kimono, like a coat. Uh, and funny enough, in Chinese culture, 
uh, the emperor had um, the dynasty had on his kimono a dragon with four claws and I think that's I th I'm not sure about the number it's either five or four but I think it's four claws and the person nobody else could have on his kimono the dragon with uh, claws on four claws on it I don't think anyone could have a dragon even except the emperor and the person that the emperor deemed worthy could have a dragon with three claws on his uh, kimono uh, if you ever have the chance read up on the kimono and you know all the uh, clothing purposes that is served in ancient I guess you can call it in ancient China in China not ancient China just in China uh, before China got really modernized and I don't know I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about basically in the times of dynasties their clothing told a lot about them so that's really interesting uh, but this is basically the end of this video, making it, instead of more sexy, we make it more bulkier and more geared up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll be back next week with another one, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Everything changes.